Let's bring in former head county prosecutors in, in New Jersey and criminal defense attorney Bob Bianchi. Bob, good to have you with us today. You know, I, just heading in here, just in terms of background, I'm struck by Governor Evers' tweet because I was listening to some reporters this morning who covered a lot of the riots, the terrible situations that we saw all across this country of businesses burning last summer. And they said they went to Minneapolis, they went to other cities across the summer, but they never saw anything like what they saw in Kenosha. They said when we got to Kenosha, the really striking thing was that while these businesses were being burned and people were looting and setting things on fire and breaking windows, he, they, there was no police and no National Guard anywhere for days. And now you hear Tony Evers has got 500 National Guard on standby, yeah. and you wonder if this whole thing would even be in the court right now, if that kind of protection had been brought in when it was really needed. And that's when Kyle Rittenhouse decided to bring his gun uh, to his father's hometown of Kenosha and to see what he could do. What are your thoughts as you hear about what's going on so far with this jury and the request for those documents? I think this is uh, bad for the prosecution. I've been saying throughout, <clears throat> something just didn't seem right with this prosecution to begin with. Having investigated homicide cases for half of a career and leading a homicide unit, the fact they filed charges just days after the incident, before having the autopsy, before having the crime scene evidence, before having the witness interviews, before looking at all the videos, the, the defense made a big deal of that in summation to say this was about politics. This was not about having a proper prosecution. They needed somebody to blame. And if it wasn't for the lawlessness, this would not have happened. And Martha, that's really important to the self-defense claim and why the jury's probably focusing in on that. And I can tell you as a homicide prosecutor, I would not like that question from the jury mm -hmm. because what they're trying to determine was whether or not it was reasonable that he was in fear of his life or great bodily harm. And a lot of people on the other side of this equation keep going to this concept of provocation. That's what the prosecutor had to say this was about. This case was about that Rittenhouse provoked the violence. But if you look at the jury charge, and I'm looking at it right now, that says very clearly, and I'm sure the jury is looking at this in the self-defense section of the jury charge, it only applies to a person who engages in lawful conduct of a type likely to provoke violence. Martha, many people had the AR-15s out there and weapons out there, and it did not provoke violence. Kyle Rittenhouse, based on the state's own witnesses, which I could not believe. I was, I was hosting a show, I got on, and I was listening to a state's witness, and I, I asked my producer, I'm like, is this a defense witness called out of turn, or is this a state's witness? It was a state's witness talking about how Rittenhouse was trying to get away. He was outmatched. He had rocks being thrown at him, shots being fired. He was being knocked to the ground, hit by a skateboard, so on and so forth. So the question becomes for the jury, was it reasonable for him to believe that he, it's not just die, that he could suffer great bodily harm? Mm. And that's what this jury's focusing on. If they come back with saying, yeah. yes, that's what it is, that this is an outright acquittal. And people are gonna be upset about it, but the fact of the matter was, like the, like the defense lawyer said in his summation, mm. this was a rush to judgment in order to point the finger at somebody to blame them for what law enforcement didn't do, which as you point out right now, apparently now they're going to do. Yeah, um, well, you never know what's going on in the minds of these jurors, seven women, five men. Uh, one of them is a person of color who is a man, um, and they are inside that room, and, and the justice was very clear. The judge was very clear. He said, you've got to forget everything that has happened outside of this story. Everything that you've heard in the press, you need to focus on really what they asked for, which is those six pages of the instructions. Was he acting in self-defense moment by moment? from what you have learned throughout the course of this trial. Uh, so we will see. Bob, thank you very much. Always good to have you with us. We'll see what My happens. Pleasure.